In this video, we will be demonstrating a neo aorto iliac system reconstruction using pantaloon configuration. The steps of the procedure are first deciding whether to take on the operation over one or two stages. Several studies demonstrate no difference in operative time, blood loss, patency, morbidity, or mortality. Seeing the equivalence in outcome and efficacy, we choose this two-staged approach due to the length and technically demanding nature of the operation. Two options are available for the first stage of the operation. On the one hand, vein exposure and branch ligation can be undertaken the first day, while the grafts are left in situ for later harvest and until the required length of vein needed can be determined after distal targets are exposed and distance measured intraoperatively. Overnight, sequential compression and DVT prophylaxis should be used as there is a potential risk of autologous vein thrombosis. To circumvent that risk, our institutional experience is to harvest the femoral vein during the first stage for overnight preservation in Wisconsin solution. However, utilizing this approach dictates that sufficient length is harvested based on preoperative planning. During the second stage, the aorta and iliac vessels are exposed and controlled. Femoral vein reconstruction is undertaken. Various configurations will be discussed in this video, as well as demonstrated in subsequent videos in our series. The graft is then explanted, proximal dysanastomoses are constructed, an omental patch is fashioned, and the abdomen is closed. During the first stage of the operation, two teams are employed and tasked with harvest of the femoral vein from each thigh. Ultrasound is first used to localize the vein. Incision is made along the lateral border of the sartorius muscle, extended superiorly towards the aces and inferiorly towards the femoral condyle. The sartorius is then reflected medially with caution to preserve its blood supply. The subsartorial canal is entered with exposure of the femoral vessels. Care should be employed to avoid inadvertent injury to the femoral nerve. The femoral vein is then dissected more superiorly to aid in that exposure. The sartorius muscle is reflected laterally. The vein has multiple side branches, which must be meticulously, sometimes doubly ligated to withstand the aortic pressure. Proximally, the femoral vein is suture ligated, flush with its confluence of the profunda vein. With the vein free from its superior attachments, the section can be continued distally to the level of the knee joint. The vein is measured to ensure adequate length for the planned operation and the distal end marked with a suture. The distal stump is then suture ligated. The conduit is then submitted to the blood bank to be preserved overnight for the second stage in Wisconsin solution. We elect to place drains in the harvest bed in order to control for seromas and lymph leaks. The incision is then closed in a layered fashion using 3O PDS and 4O monocryl. A midline laparotomy is made using a 15 blade scalpel. The section is taken down subcutaneous tissue using electrocautery. Upon entry into the peritoneum, the transverse colon is reflected cephalad and wrapped in a lap towel. The small bowel is eviscerated and also wrapped in a similar fashion, then a bowel retractor is placed. The retroperitoneum is then incised and continue our dissection directly on top of the aorta. We continue to free retroperitoneal attachments from the aorta and continue our dissection in a caudad fashion. The descending colon is then reflected medially and the line of tolt is incised to expose the left common iliac artery which is circumferentially dissected and controlled with umbilical tape. A retrocolic tunnel is then created and preserved also with umbilical tape. Directing our attention proximally, the aorta is circumferentially dissected and controlled. The autologous grafts are now brought to the field and the decision on which configuration to employ is made based on the planned operation, aortic diameter, and length of vein needed. Some varieties demonstrated here display end-to-end -end as well as end-to-side proximal anastomoses. In this case, we chose option C, or the pantaloon configuration, to accommodate the diameter of our inflow 
and the relatively short jump to the common iliac outflow. With the reversed femoral veins aligned, the proximal ends are incised and spliced to create a common channel. A foraproline suture is used to first construct the back wall of our common channel. Then the autograft is flipped in order to construct the front wall with a separate foraproline suture. Then our conduit is pressurized and we check for leaks. Turning our attention back to the abdomen, the aorta is incised and the infected endoprosthesis exposed. The graft inflow and outflow are controlled with clamps, graft incised. At this point, suprarenal clamp is applied and the proximal end of the graft is explanted. Our proximal graft to aorta and to end anastomosis is then constructed with a 3-0 proline suture and parachuted down to allow for optimal exposure. The proximal clamp is released and the graft anastomosis is checked for leaks. After the distal grafts are explanted, the distal anastomoses are constructed with a 3 proline suture in a similar fashion. The clamp is released and the anastomosis checked for leaks. The contralateral limb is then passed to the retrocolic tunnel and our contralateral anastomosis was constructed also with a 3 proline suture. Clamps are released and also we check for leaks and kinks. At this time, an omental flap of adequate length is created, ensuring adequate blood supply, and then passed through a tunnel in the transverse colon mesentery. A flap is then secured to the retroperitoneum using 3 OPDS suture. The abdomen is then closed with the number one loop PDS suture, and the skin is reapproximated using staples. We hope you enjoyed our video demonstrating neo-aortoiliac reconstruction.